Hello, I'm Roland Kahn. I used to design and build com software computer systems. My company, Face to Face Behavior Enhancement, helps people work together. My story is about lying in business. I was in my th early 30s. I'd recently returned to England with my new family. And I was working in London for an American company. We were working on a new bargain settlement system for the London Stock Exchange. I was assigned to a team that was testing the programs. It was a simple exercise of checking the results of each test. My job was to determine whether the results showed that the program was working correctly, and if not, either the program had to change or the test had to be revised to, do, to work correctly. It was fun because I was using my uh, research training but on computer programs and computer systems instead of on psychology experiments. I was in the office one day instead of at the client's premises uh, when I overheard my manager talking on the phone with the client. And I heard him say um, the work was going well and it would be completed on time. As a person working uh, on the testing team, I actually knew how much work there was still to be done and how we were, were making progress. And in my opinion, uh, what he said was just plain not true. Uh, I thought it was wrong to mislead the client and to give commitments that uh, one couldn't substantiate, couldn't meet. And I didn't want to work for a company where that sort of behaviour was acceptable. I decided to leave as soon as possible. I've no idea whether the, the system uh, eventually worked. Or I did leave and moved to a more interesting job, but that's another story. At the time, I observed behaviour that I thought was lying. I evaluated it. Uh, I thought it was unacceptable behaviour and changed my job. With hindsight and much more experience, I'd be more cautious because there are other interpretations. I heard only one side of the conversation. I didn't know the personal relationships between the manager and the client. I didn't know the details of the project. And perhaps most importantly, I didn't know the issue that they were actually discussing. I still maintain that uh, lying is not acceptable behavior in business. My thought at the time was that one must always tell the literal truth, a simple principle that can lead to unfortunate results. A better principle with higher integrity is to make sure that the message received is what you want the recipient to hear. To do this, you have to understand how your partner thinks, what he's worrying about, the sort of language and phrases that he uses. In this case, what I heard as we'll finish testing by next month might actually convey the message. It's okay. The issue has been dealt with and we'll finish on schedule. The message conveyed and understood would be truthful, but the words used and understood literally would not. At the time, I was young and naive. I felt my first responsibility was to provide for my family. I wasn't willing to challenge my manager, risk not only my job, but my reputation and perhaps my career as well. I voted with my feet and left the job in protest. But I didn't have the courage to say why I was leaving, and I didn't give the company the opportunity to reply, explain, or defend itself. If you like, I lacked the moral courage and strength of character. So, I've told the story in simple, everyday language, such as everybody can understand, especially people in business. I became a Quaker because it gave me a reason to get out of bed in the morning, a reason for living. And part of that was the integrity of living out my beliefs in everyday situations. Some people believe lying and dishonesty are a necessary part of business. My experience is just the opposite. You don't do business with people you don't trust. Being truthful and being seen to be honest is essential for that. Lying is just not acceptable. My integrity as a Quaker needed to be expressed in some practical way. I left the company. I believe people have equal worth and I should treat them with the same respect that I reserve for myself.
This was a situation where my standards and values were in conflict with those of my manager. It would have been more honest to recognise the, con the conflict and ask my manager, calmly and politely, what the phone call had been about, because it seemed to me to be dishonest. That would have treated him as a rational, responsible person, instead of as a demon. Confronting it on the basis of equality, with the common object of a successful project and a happy client, would have resolved the conflict. We would both have emerged with stronger and with a better relationship. But that insight didn't come until much later. The root of my mismanagement was my own feeling of inferiority, low self-confidence and so on. Dealing with that is a story for another day. Recognising and dealing with one's own vulnerability, uncertainty and lack of confidence takes courage and determination and practice. It also takes the ability to see a situation from someone else's point of view. Another lesson that I didn't learn until much later. If you want to use Christian language, God was testing me, challenging me to put my Quaker principles into practice. He was teaching me lessons about confronting the evils of this world and living humbly in His grace.